Joy. And yes, Suzuki Grand Vitara. Yo, Suzuki Grand Vitara, but like with the speakers all the way up, that the music was like a little distorted. Yes. With the that's where we live. The back. Yes, stop it, stop it. I'm gonna have to find that picture now. But that that's my road dog. If you got a road dog in your life, make sure you stay connected. Welcome to Story Time with Cerise. Preview. And now, let's all welcome your host, Cerise Thomas. Woo! Hello, hello, welcome back, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, I could barely sit in this right now because I am beyond excited for my next guest. It's so, so, so special to me and I am honored that she is on story time with Cerise. I mean, honestly, she needs no introduction, but she is a mother, a mompreneur. She is the makeup artist of the century. I actually didn't even want to do my makeup because I was nervous when she saw it. But she is down to earth. She's hilarious. She's a model. She's beautiful. She's done it all. She is a woman of God. She is my friend from childhood, my sister today. Everyone give a huge round of applause to my girl, Felicia Brown. <laughs> Look at you. Hi, you, uh, you know, green is her thing, so I tried to come here with the green. I tried. I and see you. Listen, I'm trying. I tried to you know, back in the day, this is my road dog. Like, we right. used to be in the car talking about everything, talking about our future, what we're going to do, who we're going to be. And th the biggest thing that really got us through, though, was the music. <laughs> we were rappers. We I feel, yeah, we were rappers. If you guys want to check our music oh my out, God. we would be rolling the window down and rapping at people. Especially this one right here. But I was right where her Eve is. Eve, forget. You would not hate you. See, all right. I know is that my girl, yo, right. we was all. <laughs> we were going off. I still and... think about you to so many songs. When I when I hear John B, they don't know, because I know that song irritated just so. I, every time I hear I'll be like, yo, Therese, I don't know what it was with this song. Let us know, voice of men. I hate that song. And she will always request it during Christmas time. <laughs> Let it snow. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I love that song. Like, I still have it on my um playlist from time to time. With um what's that? Um but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yo. Joy. Yes. Yes. And yes, Suzuki Grand Vitara. Yo, Suzuki Grand Vitara, but like with the speakers all the way up, that the music was like a little distorted. Yes. With the That's where we live. The back. Yes, stop it, stop it. I'm gonna have to find that picture now. But that that's my road dog. If you got a road dog in your life, make sure you stay connected because it is so wonderful to see where we are today. I am just so proud of you. I told you we're like stands over here. Just everything that you do. Like I said, first of all, she's an incredible mother. She is raising a queen over there. She is doing it. She's a single mom and she's successful on top of that. And I'm just like, I tip my hat off to you, girl, because you make it look real easy. You make it look real easy. And I'm just like, I'm over here struggling, all right? And you over here just out. Look at, like, why do you look like this at this time of the morning? And you are doing it all. But I'm so excited that you're on. Storytime with Cerise is an, a wonderful opportunity and platform to showcase who you are, what you do, and talk a little bit about some transparent things. And today we're going to get into a topic that so many of us women, men, um, deal with and we don't talk about, we don't analyze, or you see someone as incredible as Felicia and you don't know her backstory. And it's always good to know somebody. You always judge someone 
based on what you think you know or how they interact in public. Um, but there's a lot that we have to wrestle behind the scenes. And if we gave each other that grace and that sensitivity, we would all get along a little better and, you know, move forward together. So this is wonderful. Tell me a little bit about your life as a mom. Let's start there. Mom life is, is crazy. You know, it's a, every day is an adjustment, you know, it's fun. It's tiring. You know, it's funny. Jace is really funny. She's like having like a teenager for real because she really makes me laugh. And, you know, just finding the balance between being a friend and being a mom. Because I know, you know, our moms wasn't our little friend, but I want my daughter to think I'm her friend a little bit because these people are not friends. A lot of people don't know how to be a friend. And we have to be the one that gives them that example because Sometimes I have to tell her, you know, if somebody don't want to say hi to you, you don't got to keep saying hi to them. Because I see when you say hello to them, they're not saying hello back. So it's okay to stop saying hello. She's like, but you know, mom, she's, you know, she's just younger or she, listen, I like that you're nice like that. But what I'm saying is don't overdo somebody if they're not even get paying you no attention. Just finding a balance of how to have them give people boundaries and how to <clears throat> let somebody know, um, uh-uh, we're not doing that. Because you have to be able to do it. These kids now, especially in certain environments, you know, these kids are being exposed to different things than I expose my kids to. So oh, my goodness. It's very yes. likely that she's going to get exposed to something before I expose it. But I just have to make sure, just, just paying attention to make sure I could see the changes. Because watch, watch when um, Persia start getting big, you're going to really be looking at her like. You notice when it's something. Scary. Yeah. you like, you know, yeah. I love that you said you got to pay attention. Yeah. But you know, you don't really know yourself as a woman until you have a, a daughter. I feel like, not, let me not say you don't really know yourself, but you really get to see yourself in a different light when you have a daughter because it's like somebody act like this. And if, if I'm going to be honest, I know that it's me. And it makes me. Ooh self-evaluate i have to evaluate myself all the time because when i see she acting some type of way i know i'm the one that she spends her time with between what i'm doing and what other kids are doing i know she's getting a mix you know of everything but mostly still, you because you're her you're her everything yeah so that's so lightning because i think about that too they say you're, it's like having a daughter is like arguing with yourself and, and then they start to like they cooler than you. They like for she, real. She be like, oh my god! Like if I if I'm like sing a song or something, walk about a song, she be like, oh please, oh my god, mom, stop! I'm like, this is when you're seven, and that's a really like, good song. See, what the problem right? is. <laughs> and that's a really good song. No, yeah, you're like yo, that is I so do. real, girl. Is that that part I'm struggling with right now? Is the sassiness, the the, the talk back? Cause she's. She's turning three. Oh, she's three. And she's just in the, like, I'm a battle. I'm a battle you. I'm like, but you can't. And it's, I love how you said, like, that balance between, like, I am your friend because I want you to talk to me. And I just dealt with that with Persia with this young girl drama. I'm like, how, how y'all got drama? Like, it starts now. I just said that. And I'm just like, you know, I'm no, she's like, such and such. She didn't want to be my friend. I was like, well, then move on to the next one. And I'm your friend. And daddy's your friend. And you got right. aunties and uncles, you know? So I love that you're instilling that confidence in her, but also learning the balance to be like, hey, girl, I'm your mother. I'm, I'm still your mother. So you are doing an incredible job at that. Um, you. you are thriving in your career at the same time. Well, that's what we see, you know? Tell me a little bit about you even getting into the makeup industry. Oh, girl, I remember in the beginning stages, like you talk about, you hear about music industry, right? Or, you know, performing arts and it's cutthroat. It's just as cutthroat in the makeup industry, but you thrive, you continue to stay true to who you are. Tell me about how you balance all of that. Okay, well, first, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit because you asked the first uh, first question, and I really, really, really want to answer that one first because you said, how did I get started or where, you know, did I first come introduced? And it honestly was with you. You were the first female that I hung out with that actually did their makeup because, you know, you was a little older. You were a little older than me. 
So hanging out with you, you know, I said, oh, she does her makeup, she does her hair every day. I used to, you remember, I used to just stand there and watch. I remember. And sometimes it. Maya would be like, oh my God, Felicia's <laughs> watching us again. And <laughs> it's because y'all are doing something. It's not like y'all not doing, doing the, the most doing too. Something. We and just I'm got introduced to eyelashes and everything. So we was doing the most. We was doing the most. Yeah, you, yeah. you was full face, like. Doing the most. One time, it just kept going. Yep. Yeah. Four and five lip glosses. <laughs> like, I used to be like, <laughs> like, where's she going? <laughs> like, we finna step, girl. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, but that is like, that makes me feel so good. Because I'm all like, when I was younger, mm -hmm. I would see my mom and I'm like, I want to wear that that lipstick. I'm going to wear the lipstick. So that is such an honor to know. On my wedding day, I know you was helping to touch me up. But I love that you got inspired by Because I remember you used to be, and you have these naturally popping eyelashes, by the way. Because I remember <laughs> always looking at you and be like, Felicia, your <laughs> eyelashes, you they, they were thick, fluffy. Like, and I used to always like envy you for that. Like, my sister's was like all oh, skinny and thin because I didn't put too much mascara on. So that is so good to know. I had no idea. Nah, your <laughs> mascara design used to, yo, the real was like mascara this. was so precise. You like, remember that? Every day. <laughs> like, oh. you had a makeup routine, then Jasmine with the makeup, Kiana with the lip gloss. Oh. Maya was putting on her makeup. Y'all were like the main ones. Angela used to be like, wow, um, I like it too. And when I started to get into it, because at first I didn't know how to do it for me. I used to just watch y'all do it for y'all. But once I started to get into it, I was like, you know, I really, I really like this. You know, um, I like the way you can change your look, you know, with makeup or hair. It's like the best. It's like, Fun. And you remember I used to do you hair. Want to I used to do my friends. Remember I used to do my friends' yes, hair. I used to braid. I forgot about that. Oh my god. That's goodness. how I ended up doing it because I'm like, you know what? After college, I'm sorry, with all everything I was going through, you know, I could not do college. That's one thing I need to add on my list of how depression affects you. Like you cannot, it's hard to learn during the time like that. So after two years of college, I was like, I cannot. So let me do something that I can do. Like, I'm doing hair. Let me go to beauty school. I went to beauty school. Like, kind of like halfway through, I was like, yeah, no, actually. I don't want to <laughs> do like this because I realized it was very time consuming. And after a while, I'm like, I need to shape a lifestyle that when I wake up every day, I'm like, I could do this. And it made me, once I realized I didn't really like doing hair, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to figure out something. What else do you got to do in this building? Oh, what is fulfilling me? What is it going to be? Right. Yeah, I started to just roam around the building one day and I came across the makeup room and I'm like, peeking in there. I'm like, okay, that that looks like, I, I like that. That's That interests me, you know? Ooh. And I would just keep going by like every day and until they started covering the window, then I stopped going there. <laughs> and not covering the window. Yeah, like that covered, I'm like, you ain't have to cover the window. <laughs> you ain't have to well, do all that. Like, you have to do all that. Right, right, right. But um, then I started to just um get magazines, books, um, of looks that I thought if I learned to do those specific looks that I would be successful. And you know everybody has a different makeup style. There are different styles that are more prominent in other style. You got like urban styles. You know bottle girl styles. Club oh, girls, stripper girl styles. Oh. Like, you know, the styles that these girls normally Style. wear. You know, my, Strippers, you know, my stripper girl yeah, makeup will like, look like. Super yes. You know, oh, but like a it's lot more. Of people, yeah. But then I realized that people like simple styles too. So I was like, if I can learn how to master a clean face that looks good oh. in person and on screen, then I would do okay. And that's what happened. And you don't want to know what was the game changer. And I'm so happy to have this opportunity to talk about this game changer. I went to a makeup show and she was there. And she, you know, she's Emmy nominated. All the things. Accolade down. So I'm like, you know, let me be a volunteer to, you know, have the demo done on me. 
all these people watching her make me like a clown, girl. When I went into the bathroom, when I first of all, when I, went there, I was looking at myself like, <laughs> and then looking at everybody looking at me. I was so. Oh my gosh. But Felicia, said, one thing about I... you is you always keep it 100. So I don't know. You never give like no like poker face. Like we know Thank what you're you. thinking. Yeah, that's what I've always liked. Like you are, what you see is what you get. So what did you Thank do? You. I'm, glad. I'm glad you let them know that, please. Because I that's sat there and I just was like, okay, like they took a picture, gave it to me. I'm looking at the picture like, all right, I went in the bathroom. I started wiping that stuff off my face. And I was like, you know what? If this lady made it, she made it. And if she can make it, I can make it too. Right. Wow. <laughs> I'm way oh. better than you. Because what is this you put on my face here today? Yo. And everybody like, yeah, I'm like, it looks fine. I'm looking like, I know my face. Going oh, well, right. I've been there. I, know. I have been there. I have seen my face get done, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I know exactly no, what I you're talking about. I you're like it. the only person that has done my face, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. No, and remember that day? I was, I was not even exaggerating. I think it was one of the first times you got to do my face at CCC. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing a shoot, and you was like, Therese, I never like did your face. And I was like, yo, I'm so hyped. I was also a little nervous in the back of my head because I always feel like, you know how you like your face or whatever. You didn't ask me no questions. You went in because you knew what I like. And so that's probably why. And I was like, girl, I like this so much that she, she had to give me a little, a little like lip gloss and something. Because I was like, I got to see if I can do this at home. Yeah, so when I say you know what, we get together, touch. we do a makeup together. Yes, please, because I need a whole new like. Because I, I was, I thought I was doing something when I do my makeup. When you did my makeup, I was like, oh, that's why there are makeup artists because it was a whole different level of professionalism. My face, my features were more like I just felt like, yay, she highlighted my features. I didn't have black. Some people do these black, thick, dark eyebrows on Angry me. Brow. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you just made me look so flawless. And I was like, I tried to keep that makeup on. I think I texted you the next day. I was like, I tried to keep it on. <laughs> so I know you got that magic touch. And that is crazy that it took someone that did your face. And you was like, okay, no, this ain't it. And if she could do it, and you definitely got it. Okay, girl. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate it, but that definitely gave me the push. I would never forget the push it gave me. I'm like, shit, she's doing it. I could definitely do it. I mean, you know, I would like to get an Emmy one day, but even, I if, I, even right. if I never got an Emmy, I'm still outside. People already know my clients. Yeah. Already know. Yeah, man. girl. I got looks for days. And you know what? I have a lot of clients that are that are like that. They're scared or, they, or they're like, want to look in the mirror every minute or just like, what's, yep. that, what's that? And I don't mind. I let each lady come in here and whatever she goes through while we're here together, I will go through with her. Like, okay, what what do you like? You know, what do you don't like? What do you want to see? Do you like your eyebrows shaped a certain way? If Do you Ooh. want your lips in a certain way? Because there are certain things that, you know, things that I would do to me, somebody might not like it done to them like overdrawn right. lips or mm. but sometimes they don't understand what it's going to look like and how it's going to wear later on down the day because exactly. i try to do makeup so that it can last the longest time possible through everything sure does. you kill it girl yeah. and you are out here running the makeup game doing your thing as a mom uh oh you and, always and... be doing that you running the makeup like yo i I'm mean so i'm so just so i'm just I mean, I'm just speaking what I see, what I, you running the makeup game, girl. All right. So y'all better check her out. Y'all know I'm going to link all her information down below. So make sure you check out Felicia. If you need your makeup done, just hit her up. Because I know she's based, she's based out of New York, but she be all over. So you connect with her, find out what her services are. And trust me, she is one that you want to get in her makeup chair. And so it's so wonderful to see you, like I said, the makeup queen, the beautiful mom, beautiful daughter, and just how you are with your friends, your people. You always show love, girl. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Felicia, is she keeps it 100. Like, if I came in 
and my energy was off. And like, I'm just like, ain't nobody gonna check me. She'd be like, you good? This? I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm good. She, and, but you need those people. You need but you know, people. certain people energy, like your energy is like a high energy. So like, if it's off, like I'm gonna wanna know like, that's true. what happened? Yeah, yeah. Right away, she would know. She'd be like, I saw it. Or like, she would look at me across the room and be, if she was mad at something, she'd be like, the room. And and I mean, you, to have, we need more genuine people in life. We need more people to just be able to just say what you feel. Just say what you right. feel. Now, I know that sometimes we just got to keep quiet, but when it's time to speak, just say what you got to say. And so I, I'm encouraged by you. I love that you have been blessed to be a mother because now you're instilling that into another young girl that's going to grow up and have that confidence. So we're kind of, you know, talking about a topic today that many of us deal with. You see people on top, you see them going, you see them with vibrant personalities, just like uh, I call her hot girl because I just we just always call each other hot girl because she just hot. <laughs> um, uh, but Felicia, you know, we're gonna actually talk about the depression complex, and I I I always look back, like I always think about right before life, if you know what I'm saying. I always think about like, yo, we was young and out here and with no not one care. We thought we no. had cares. We just to get to rehearsal on time. That was the that was the stress. Life. Get to like, pick up. You gotta go. Come on. Come down the street. Remember my my car almost stopped in the middle of the street. They're like, we did not have a real like, and then life happens, you know, you go your separate way, things happen, family, between family, friends, money, purpose, you just start, it's, it gets heavy. And I just want to talk to you about what that was like for you when you felt like, man. Like, am I depressed? Am I dealing with anxiety? I know anxiety for me, hit, like it hit the roof when I became like an adult. You know, I was just like, what is this feeling where I'm just like, between the depression and the anxiety, you're just like, what is this? Where, why is it? And it's very hard to notice, you know, cause you start to engage in new habits that over time are kind of pacifying that depression and that anxiety. So you may not notice it. So when did you notice that you might have been struggling a little bit with depression? I think I noticed more when I became a teen. I think being around you guys mm. made me realize that something was wrong with me wow <laughs> or where like I felt like I was different or I felt like you know just always felt like I didn't fit in um which that makes you kind of isolate yourself in your mm -hmm. mind kind of. mm -hmm. once you start to isolate yourself in the mind I think that's when that's where it all begins yeah that's where yeah yeah and um and even being around everybody, seeing everybody's different lifestyles and different mm. friendships and other kinds of relationships, just kind of being an observer, it kind of makes you be an observer because, you know, when you're going through depression or like anxiety, a lot of the times you're, when you're being observant, you're just trying to observe who really is going to do something to you. Really. Mm. I feel like in my because people always be like, oh, you're so observant. I know you guys used to remember me like just be on kind of off to the side, just watching mm -hmm. people. I have never been around that many people like that in a closed space. So it makes you kind of like analyze everybody's personality before they actually get close to you. So you know what the person is gonna do. And Ooh. I still do it, do it to this day. You know, whenever I enter a new space, you know, it makes you quiet, it makes you watch because you know based on the things or people or situations that hurt you, you already know that a stranger would do it. Because if somebody Ooh. close to you would do something to you, it changes your perspective of strangers. Because it's like, if you would do it, then you definitely would do it. And if you do, <laughs> I see you. Praying to me now, I ain't God, but I pretend. <laughs> I feel 
to you or not, all right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> God. <clears throat> oh, that is so real. You get hurt by somebody on the inside. Like, man, forget everybody else. Like, what I'm going to try, what I'm going to try for. And that's like a lot of depression stems from hurts, friendships, relationships, and the navigation of like looking at what's going on around you. And yeah. it was so, like, I read something that said, no matter what's going on around you that will affect how you feel, the war, and you just said that, really takes place in your mind. It's really what's going on inside because mm -hmm. it's how you're it's how you're reacting to that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're holding on to a certain hurt or if you're 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 analyzing like, man, that's not I'm not like that. And how come I'm not engaging in something like that? And then then the mind starts to build a story and a mm -hmm. narrative about who you are that potentially is false and breeds the seed of depression, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. how did you begin to, and even as a teen, that's tough. That's tough. I can't even say being around you that I ever considered that you were dealing with depression and that right there, because this is new news to me. Right. Okay, right. I'm we over here rapping to Eve and stuff like that. And this is the bigger, and this is why I, I'm so grateful for you exposing this topic because you'll be thinking your person to the left is good yo when I first wrote about it on Facebook you know Baba called me like love you alright you alright and I'm just yeah. like I know a lot of people were probably really really shocked by it but I like to consider myself as I missed a, that like, Facebook post I like, that. like a oh for real I posted a, a while ago I, I, I don't feel like it really affects me as much as it thinks it does. It's like, I'm fighting it. It's like, I'm constantly in a fight with it. And I know the things that are triggering me with it. So I'm constantly, you know, ready to fight it. But going back to back then, I think that's the importance of really not isolating yourself because I really, there was only really but so much I could isolate myself around y'all. Because remember, we were doing so many fun things. You know, I was experiencing a new style of church and God and worship. So and, and we love, we really genuinely so loved you. And we want it's like even if you wanted yeah. to stay to yourself, we'd be like, all right, Felicia, come, come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that I that was it is so important to be around like even godly people, friends. Yes not no holier than thou type group, but I'm just saying people that genuinely love you because even when they don't know you're dealing, that genuine love is still going to pull you in. And that right. blesses me to exactly. know that. And that's exactly what happened, you know, being around with you guys and still, and even still to this day, being around and us, we all getting a kiss together and we, you know, I... I know it was a blessing from God. I know all of you were a blessing from God that just came just at the right time because mm. I feel like after a certain age, you know, you're not really making friends for real because people start to see you for what they see you on the outside. They start to see you for your status or what you might have and or even mm. what you don't have. And people get judgmental if they feel like, you know, that you getting ahead of them and stuff like that. Or, you know, then there's other people who feel sad that they're not where somebody else is and mm -hmm. it makes you project a lot of people project that was one skill that I learned being around you guys but I used to be like God I don't like this feeling I don't like to feel like I'm not pretty I don't like to feel like I don't look nice in my clothes because remember they used to be all the I used to be dresses look at it soupy jasmine yes. I used to be having the shoes did you every <laughs> to be like okay like i know i'm supposed to do that but i don't feel comfortable like it's not always easy i definitely felt that way when it came girl. to the dress yeah i was i was right with yeah. you sis. i was right with, i was like i can't i can't do that i definitely struggled there internally being around a group of people that i loved and wanted to do <clears throat> the same thing but i knew i didn't feel comfortable sometimes i mm -hmm. tried and i was like this ain't me i just yeah, i that's can't the first thing the first yeah. thing I asked God to take away from him, I'm like, I don't want to be nothing because ain't nobody worse than a hater. 
And I said, I, God, I don't want to be that. If there's Ooh. nothing that I don't want to be, if there's anything I pray not to be, is that because that is the worst. And the more God, you know, helped me learn to see myself and even learn how to give beauty to others and make myself up in all these different ways, that was God's gift to me. Like, wow, individuality, you know, be who you are. Yeah, you might take a thing from a person or two, but overall, yeah. Be you and be influenced by the right things and the right people. People who are, you know, of God. Because unfortunately, if people is not serving God, they is serving the devil. I'm sorry. It's there's either Period. One, side one or the they other. Need to be fighting. And some people might be in the middle. And some people is fighting more to get to one side and fighting to get away from the other side. But you have to choose because these thoughts are going to come into your mind that are not of God. And those things are jealousy. Those are envy. It is greed, you know? And I'm like, God, man, I don't care about none of this stuff. Like, I really don't. Let me get my $100 outfit or my $50 outfit. I know, that's right. Girl. And kill it, you know? Like, I don't have to have the whole world to feel like I'm somebody. I just want to have respect. That's it. That's really all I ask for. Um, But... Just to learn how to be comfortable in my skin and not envy or covet my neighbor because it's very easy to covet your neighbor and you have to pray that away and say, I don't want this. Give me something for me. Whenever I'm coveting somebody or I'm feeling like I want something that somebody got, what do I have right now? How am I managing what I got going on? And if it's not good, if I'm not doing a good job, immediately it goes out of my head because you're not ready for that. And that's fine. You like it, yeah. But look at where you're at. Mm. Look, what, look at what you're doing. Okay, so you don't have no business to cover nobody because you got enough things to do. You barely manage, managing what you got to do for you. So worry about mm. you first. And then use it as inspiration because I always think whenever the Bible say eyes have not seen, ears not, have not heard, when I see something online and it is outlandish i said well lord you said eyes have not seen <laughs> and because i've seen it <laughs> that means it's going to be bigger right oh because you I said i have right. not seen wow because there's no way like these that's things good. if you allow these things to influence you like it really will i think the only reason why it doesn't influence me like that because i really don't care like i don't care about pop culture i don't care about nothing extracurricular besides me my home my child, the things that matter. Like people, they want to talk about rat beefs and this one. I, please miss me. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to know. So I don't know, out of the these people, they pay their bills. They bills. That's it. Pay. And they worried about themselves. They doing what they doing on their platform that they called to do it on. Right. And how I look in right. uproar. I'm in uproar for what? I need to be uproar about my wow. own things going on. So good, Felicia. <laughs> You started with expression you to observe and isolate and be so concerned about what she's doing, what he's doing, what she's wearing. And so you got to a place where you was just like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What, what's my business? And that began to shift the narrative because really the root of depression is a negative narrative. And if you can change the narrative about yourself, then you can really manage that depression and anxiety. And you did that in order to change the narrative about any story, you got to change the book you're reading. You read in right. everybody else's book, except your own. So, right. so every as you're reading other people's books, this negative narrative, the enemy is coming in and building this story. And you talk about those thoughts, they're just on repeat. It's like a playlist. It's a bad playlist and a bad book. It's a bad story right. and a bad playlist and tell right. you to pay attention because you're not paying attention. When you start to pay attention because, uh, to who you are and you notice, you realize your value and the fact that there's only one Felicia and that only you can do right. what you do the way you do it, then you start to literally attack that depression by changing the narrative, by changing the perspective. I love that. So, you know, for people out there that are just like, why am I so, that's because you're not even paying attention to yourself. You're not even acknowledging yourself. You want other people to value and respect you, but you don't value and respect yourself. Right. And I, right. I've been there every, like you're, you're making me realize that when I do fall into those ruts, 
it's because I'm paying attention to everything and everything, everyone else. How come I'm not there? How come I can't do that? What's wrong with me? How come they don't see my value? Who cares if they don't see your value, honey? The more you right. see your value, the more they're forced to see it. People that are, right. that are, if you have haters or whatever, there's going to come a time where it's just like, well, they still can't deny this. You know what I'm saying? They still right. can't deny your talent. They still can't right. deny your gift. And so I, I really appreciate you opening my eyes to that. It's, it's twofold. It's number one, you don't even know that the person next to you is dealing with depression. And then number two, a depression really begins to take a snowball effect when you are focusing on everyone and everything else except yourself. <laughs> And you know what? And I, know and I love thing. that. Thank you. You know, another thing too is um, um, when you're hard on yourself, when you're upset with yourself. A lot of people think that you'd be upset with uh, somebody else. And a lot of times you'd be really upset with you. Do you know how yeah, hard it is facts. to be upset with yourself? Oh, people be trying to have all these fights with you. They can't even get to fight with you for real because you too busy fighting with yourself. And once wow. I realized I was like, I need to let it go. And the one thing that really set me over the edge with the series, you know, all the talks that we've ever had, and you know, having a baby out of wedlock was never the plan. It was never the plan. I know. I know. And not only was it never the plan, you know, I had to live with that after mm. and be happy about it. Yeah. You know, because parenting is great. You know, having a child is great. But if you don't get it in the parameter that you thought, you know, in the way that you thought you was going to get it, it was so hard because mm. people will say oh people will misinterpret why are you mad again oh you just you miss your baby daddy you want to be back with your baby daddy. it don't got nothing to do with nobody else and people don't understand people will never understand Ooh. why you mad unless you went through it because if you didn't go through it then you don't really know why i'm mad you can't sympathize with me but i do realize that the things i went through helped me to sympathize with a lot of people that come and sit in front of me. So I'm like, you know, it's God's plan. You know, I had to tell myself it's God's plan because there was no way. Some of the things, because you'd be surprised the things that you're taking in or somebody thinks you're taking in, before, you know, looking at somebody that looks like everything is perfect. Like it, I can make it look perfect, but that don't mean that it is. But to be in that space where people are looking at me, like what she's doing here. Like when I'm in the welfare, they wow. looking at me. And I seen some Jew people in a in a fur coat, but we ain't gonna talk about the Jews because we already know. But <laughs> people looking at me like she like she got it for real. Wow! But just to see the pain in some people's eyes is heartbreaking, and I think that that's what God wanted me to be able to see. He mm. wanted me able to me to be able to see right through a person without them saying anything. Yeah, that's you. Uh, that's been you. And I think what's crazy is you've always had that gift. That's why I say, like, Felicia keeps it real. But, like, you see, like, even I've seen you check other people. And when I say check, it's because you've always seen through people. Like, you've even been like, nah, he not. <laughs> he not. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, that is so deep. That whole fighting with yourself and angry with yourself is real. Because, you know, I know what it feels like to really just not love yourself. And if I can't love myself, I'm not letting nobody else love me. And I, there's no way I can genuinely love you. If anything, if you get too close, I'm a bite, right? Because it feels like I'm not even at this place. So there's a whole level of self-healing. I had to go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? And I encourage people all the time. I'm like, yo, talk to a counselor. Go to therapy. Yeah, I, know. Maybe people, I think, I think people I don't like to talk about, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never seen you. one, but every time I feel like I'm going to go to a therapist, I always find a way to enlighten myself. Like, this is your problem right here. You see this? Oh, you see these dishes? That's <laughs> this is your problem right here. But, you know, talking to my <laughs> therapist, she she makes me talk. And what I, what I, at least what I realized, I mean, she'll give me like maybe some homework or some pinpoints, but a lot of it is me talking. And I realized by the end of it, oh, I just needed to get this out. And by the end of my conversation, I done figured out. And I, for me personally, I, I don't, I don't negate non-Christian therapists, but I know I needed a Christian therapist. I needed, cause I knew where I was going to be talking. I was going to be talking all up in stuff, spiritual stuff, regular stuff. I'm mad. Right. I don't understand stuff. What is God doing? I need you to speak to that. Right. 
And by the end of each conversation, I just felt like it's almost like when I used to write. I used to write a lot when I was younger, especially to God. Mm -hmm. By the end of my journal, I felt like God used my pen to answer my own question. Right, so I start. Right. I started here. So I feel you on the enlightenment. Sometimes therapists they just bounce it right back at you, and and you right. feel it different. Like you get off that phone call, and you're like, "Hey, okay." And you know, it's, it's all funny about. That you, yeah. No. Go ahead. It's funny that you said bouncing off of your therapist so they could like have that dialogue. What's so crazy is that when I was going through a time when it started to really go downhill, and I was feeling it, I was working at Macy's. First of all, Macy's 34th Square, 30, 34th Street, Herald Square. That staff there, I had so many people that I was in love with. They knew everything. I wow. talked to them. I talked to, because for me, I don't care. I could tell my business, you know, because I, I really want to hear your feedback. And I had a lot of different clients. I would see people that would be married. I'd be like, can I ask you a question real quick? So, you know. I'm just, you know, branching off, you know, doing a whole family thing or whatever. What you think about this? What you think about that? And the responses that I got from a lot of those people, those married couples, those just strangers, I got the best advice for them. And between them and talking to God, I knew what I had to do, especially the first time I experienced anxiety. Wow. The first time I experienced anxiety, I really thought I was going to die. It's like Ooh. standing there and you're like, yo, like, what's happening? Like paralyzed. My heart Rick with is fear. Yeah. I am like so afraid. And you're just like, it's something. Yeah. About it. and it's like that's a new level of fear. Yeah. But that's what I knew. And you know what? Not being used to it is what made me realize something was really wrong. And then after... um being in the hospital and then, you know, they give you the medicine, pressure medicine, all that stuff after you have a baby because I had a high blood pressure issue while I was Same. pregnant. Hypertension. And they kept trying to give me, though, the medication. And I'm just like, I'm not about to be taking high blood pressure medicine for the rest of my life. Something is making my pressure high. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that thing that is making my pressure high. Because you're not going to play with me. And then next you know, I turn around and die. And I got to leave it up to somebody else to tell, to say what really happened. Or because I feel what's happening inside of me. But I feel like when you have a relationship with God, it makes it all better. Because then you could call out to him and say, uh, I'm done. Am I dying? Like, what's going on? Help me. Yep. Yep. No, just come and be come and be yep. with me because when you are a Christian for real you know that when you call for God to come and be with you he is a present he help yes he absolutely and give you the peace the peace that surpasses all understanding that they that I used to say because you used to always say that in your yes, prayers honey. I always remember yes. so you pray down okay yeah. <laughs> nah because that right there always that I still do add that and peace that surpasses all understanding because I don't un like now more than ever I there's times where I'm at peace and I shouldn't be and that's like that resonates with me I'm like I know especially at times when I was really struggling you know with depression or whatever I definitely experienced God coming in and being a present help still right. peace is crazy and I love what you said about even with the high blood pressure and stuff because it's like they said there's like three things that you can start immediately to offset anxiety and depression and number one is getting your physical self together you know just doing things physically that bring you rest and peace not just physical rest but mental rest take a walk get your life together lose a little weight whatever you have to do get off that med get your mind right Find, and then the other thing was, then you literally just worded this whole thing out. Bring God into your atmosphere. So bring, get your physical right. Bring God into your atmosphere, which for me is number one. Bring God into your atmosphere. Get your physical right. And then it says you have to be doing something that, that where you're walking in your purpose. And you talked about that in the beginning. You was like, that ain't it. That ain't it. What do I need to do that is fulfilling me? And I love... God used everything. So even when you talk about openly about having a child out of wedlock, but you turn around and God is able to use that so that you can see other people. And as you're beautifying other people, he also went way back to your childhood where you used to just observe 
other people and other people's eyelashes. And now he used that. And that's your number one game changer as you take that very thing and beautify yourself, beautify other people. And not just with the brush, honey. It's who you are, Felicia. And you know that when you're sitting, when somebody's sitting in your chair, the brush is doing what it does. That's the talent. But the gift mm -hmm. is you. The gift is how you make people feel. And it's because you see us for real. That's why I said we need more Felicia's. People do not look at people. They're scared to look at that pain in the eye. I, I will definitely attest to that. I started this platform, Storytime with Therese, because I struggle with making genuine connections. I really struggle with that. But I'm like, if I could really know somebody, if I could really hear somebody's story, it hits a different level. And that's the gift of you. You got your talent and your gift together. That's why I say you are running the game, baby girl. <laughs> Thank you, hot girl. Oh my God, this is so... I'm loving <sighs> Black to me is so good. It is it's everything. This was everything. This This needed to be talked about. We needed to talk about depression and not just, you know, you, we talk about noticing it and we talk about also how do we navigate that because, yeah, I mean, it's always going to keep trying to knock at the door and if you let it in, oh, it's going to come in, take a seat and it's going to stay. It's mm -hmm. not going to pay rent. Okay. It's and you got to learn, you got to learn your times. You got to learn the times. And the triggers you said. Valentine's Day, always a trigger. Wow. Every holiday is pretty much a trigger because every holiday you're reminded of what you don't have. Everybody's going with their family, going to have their own traditions, cooking all this food and stuff. And a lot of time I just be like, do it for one year weekend. I'll have a nice time. And, and that's it. <laughs> you know, I don't even try to do anything. So this how do you prepare? Time. How do you prepare yeah. for those holidays now? Well, Valentine's Day. You know Day, they're coming. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? For the last Valentine's Day, and, and it's not that I don't need a man to love me or nothing like that, because I know I need a man to love me, but I'm not saying that I need anybody to give me anything, although it will be nice with all of these examples that they got online. People still don't know how to wow a woman, but that's neither here nor there. But I chose to do a photo shoot, you know, Valentine inspired every year. So last year's was really, really cute. God sent me an angel named Michelle. Mashik um, Decor, she's an event planner. She came and gave me the most amazing Valentine's Day. She's like, well, what do you want? I'm like, listen, just give me Valentine's Day. Your rendition. And it was amazing. The pictures wow. came out so cute. They did a photo shoot. Um, I did oh, I think I remember I seeing to... that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna send you the pictures I, that came out. Yes, we are so gonna plaster those. Cool. I remember being like, everybody, and, and see, isn't that so funny? I'm out here with my man on a Valentine's date, and I'm scrolling through, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, look at this! So your blessing is resonating in places where you feel like, well, that's where I want to be, but people are looking at your situation like, but that's so beautiful. So it's all about yeah, narrative. Just, it's all about perspective. Yeah, that's amazing. Last year, I remember last year it took me out. It took me out for months, and I had to. I realized like, wow, this really took me out for months. Felicia, because then I wow. go through my phone, and I'm like, oh, wow, I never even showed up again really on my phone. I didn't show up online no more after that. I didn't really take a lot of pictures because being wow. like, wow, it's hard enough as it is. I don't prefer online. I was just like you talked about. That, you like, talked about social so media. Long. I am not into it. I'm really not. And I feel like it's social a beat. media is like it's, it's a like beat. an extension. It's like an extension of high school, like forever. Cause you know, high school is like one of the last times you really meet people in college, any type of school, it's like this constant connection to people. Yeah. Like people always have access to you on social media. For one, that's weird for me because I'm not a socialite for real. And there are some people that think that, oh, she wanna be popular, she wanna do she wanna do her work and go home, get her kid and that's do what it. she's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Not all this extra stuff and building this whole like and I like to help people mind their business. So if you did not see it, there was nothing to talk about. <laughs> if there was something to talk about. The, mm. What you're talking about is dated. We could go and see how far back you went to go talk about this. Like it reveals people in ways that they don't think. And it's like a new window that I don't really care for because it's not, it's like now I'm forced to exist here in this wow. space. I, I'm having a hard enough time with y'all in, in the real world. Mm. Now I got to deal with y'all in the cyber world. It's like, right. I'm drained from my day to day activities. It's already. a lot. Yeah. And then social media is a whole nother level of social 
and there's a lot of ingenuine interaction. And I there's, don't a like there's a lot of there's a lot of show. There's a lot of show. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's a blessing in the sense if you use it in that way. But if you don't need it, I agree. If it doesn't necessarily have to connect to you or your platform, I understand it because social I think, media I think can be a beast. I feel like everybody needs it. And it, it can definitely problem. help. It can help, right? But you have to know how to navigate that thing. You, because if you true. get you, you spoke it right there. You get caught up in the, the dark side of social media. That thing will keep you down, especially the whole down. concept of likes and love. Oh, and numbers you know, and follows. They don't realize that when you grow up a certain way. When you grow up, like you know, I grew up Jamaican, West Indian, that kind of style. So the last thing any Jamaican person really need is somebody to like or love them. They don't need. We don't need that. We don't beg friends. We not begging followers. You don't. You don't like, need no follow, follow, yeah. following Jesus. I'm not gonna be telling you to follow me. Follow Jesus, oh, not me. Follow. Like I'm not gonna try yeah. to gain with followers because it's like, for what? Like, yeah, people are and, weird. And, Social media and is people showing. Have, yeah, they they're showing their whole other level. Yep. But just by reading the comments, it's like, what type of devils are really existing on girl. the earth? If you could get on here and write the things that you're writing. Oh, girl. On yeah. Here. Oh it's yeah, like, Twitter fingers is real. Mm -hmm. And to read the comments of people that you know, people don't even realize that you can see their comments when they write on other things. Like you can see it, you can see your views, you can see yeah. what you, you yep. know, like. Or and like. and those are people that literally allow social media to define them. They de they get defined by who's liking their stuff, who's following their stuff. They get defined by the comments that they feel they can write by hiding behind the screen because you would never say it. I just said that the other day. With a private page. With no you, would you would never say that to this person. Right. So what is... A so now you're letting the enemy use you because you're behind this and you are possessed to write something that you would not say in person. So there is a huge dark side to social media that you've just got to be careful with and you've got to be able to manage it. Just work in your purpose. You may not blow up on social media. That is, you like, right. you may blow up outside of social media and you get right. to just share it with the people that are watching. I will block, you can block and leave. But if social media is where God has allowed your platform to reach people, use it for just that and move forward. Because you can really get caught up in the dark side. So I, I really appreciate you bringing that up. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's just a desire. I don't even have the desire. If you see my phone, like I try, I have so many photos, so many videos, and I don't even want to share myself with anybody really. Wow. But I know God wants me to do that. Yeah. I'm like, he wants your life in the hell. Life. And I, yeah, right. And I feel people's energies, and sometimes I don't want to feel y'all energies today because you, you know, know the, the ones that are good. That. You know the ones that are good. And, and you know, it's it just sucks that, you know, negative comments, you know, can, can still get your attention like positive ones and have a more effect on you than positive no. ones. It's and just I see that. so much. Yeah, people will definitely, you'll see someone that's got like a thousand comments, but they'll respond to the negative one because negative words right. have so much power. And when in this day and age, we talk depression, Social media, social media is definitely one of those things you got to be very careful with. And especially when you're dealing with depression, that might be the first thing you need to shut down. We go back to how we notice depression and then how we navigate that and how we defeat depression is by calling God into our lives, surrounding ourselves with godly people, getting physically healthy and walking in our purpose. And it's ain't nothing about no social media. <laughs> okay, right. social media is not necessarily surrounding yourself with godly people. It's a bunch of people. You got strangers watching you. You got a lot of stuff going on there. Share your life. And that it, it is a struggle though, Felicia, because you have such a big gift. And it literally says like, you don't want your, your lamp to be covered. He wants your lamp on a hill. Unfortunately right. today, online and outside of you know YouTube, wherever, is a way for the world to see people so much easier and so quicker. So, you know, um, it's a struggle. And you just got to know, but put your boundaries up, shut the access off when you need to. And when you're ready to share your gifts, or sometimes God right. will push you and you'd be like, That's all right. All right. All right. This will be yeah. Perfect. Yes. Give me an action yes. to mine because I cannot be, I, and I could go on my phone and I could talk and I could read, but I'll never post it. I will move on and go wash dishes and fold clothes. I'm so happy. I'm busy. Girl, 
love that. This one so where we wanted you to be on story time with Cerise. You done blessed us today, hot girl. You I feel like I want to go ahead and tell more stories. I got a lot of stories, actually, but I had to pray and ask God, like, because I don't want to, you know, do too we much. We would love to I... have you back. Okay. There is never too much. I would love to talk about you. I'm going to be texting you, honey. Okay. Um, I would love to talk about so many other topics because you touched on a couple of things, honey, that we can actually dive even deeper into. So right. just stand by because y'all know we're going to have, if she will have us, we were, we will love to have the Felicia Brown back on story time with Cerise. Thank you so much for your transparency today, for sharing just a short part of your story. We are so excited for the next chapter and chapters where God is going to bring you higher and show you things that your eyes have not even seen or your ears right. haven't heard yet. And I'm sitting front row to witness that what he's already done in your life, the blessing, everything that he's done. I'm I was happy to learn more about you. So I'm gonna have to start texting you on the side. Yeah, I miss you, you know, so much. So that's another thing fun. too that I wanted to say with depression, with the mismanagement of relationships. Sometimes you don't keep up because there was a time where I felt like, you know, me and you just stopped speaking and I knew it wasn't anything. Yeah. It's just that you yeah. got really busy. I got really busy. And, you know, just all that time Word. went by. I wonder see, if there was a time we were in depression at the same time and didn't probably, even know it. All that stuff, you know, because I know I was going through it for a while, just trying to figure out where I wanted to go, what I was going to do, what type of career I was going to have. I, you know, I had a couple of choices and I chose beauty and glam because I was like, at least I could be an entrepreneur and have more control of who I'm going to be seeing from, from day to day. Because when you see a whole bunch of strength, ain't no telling what somebody going to do. Because I know that's right. Nuts. Yeah. And when you look too good, people feel like they can say something to you or you got a response oh or they could try you. Or, and it's just like, this is weird. But God also showed me that th it just comes with it. You know, mm. confrontation comes with <laughs> Christianity and just that's accepting real. that, knowing that there are going to be battles ahead of me for just for my belief. And knowing Absolutely. that God will work it out for me. I know that's right. And your light shine when you have a light that's shining so bright, it attracts the darkness, right? So oh, right. the darkness keeps trying to snuff it out, honey, but that ain't gonna be the deal. And I love how you said, even in depression, there is a ton of mismanagement. And for me, who already struggles with making genuine connections, when I started dealing with depression and anxiety oh you wasn't seeing me reach out I just and then you got those strong friends they talk about I'm the person yeah. that will pour into your life I will give you advice but I don't necessarily always get that back and if that reminds me of you you when I, I used to always come to you for advice you know what I'm saying like you you were my strong friend and so when you have somebody like that you don't see people being like hey Felicia like how are you for real? Who's checking you as you check in other people? And that that's, that gets mm -hmm. really tough. And so you do start to mismanage relationships because then your expectations get off because you can't expect people to check you that are not there. You can't expect people right. to pour into your life that are not there, but you should still right. be able to love and connect because God can use anyone for that season to just pull you out. Because sometimes you just need to get pulled out. That depression will hold on to your heels. It will hold on yeah. to your heel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this was amazing, Felicia. I love you so, so I love you much. so much. You are everything. I thank you for your time, your sacrifice, your transparency, the wisdom, the nuggets that you share. This, I really know that this will bless other people that are sitting there like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize that. Oh, shoot. Like, that's what you want. You want people's light bulbs to go off and say, all right, first of all, I'm not in this by myself. Because that's what depression wants you to believe, that you laying right. in the bed by yourself. you looking at somebody's social, you look at my picture on social media, but at the time I'm laying in the bed too. <laughs> but right. my, my, my picture looking good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm struggling too. So, you know, I, I really appreciate the exposing of depression. We encourage you guys today, don't stay there. There are practical right. ways to get out of depression. And if it gets deep, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor. Sometimes it requires a little more help, medication. And people just don't talk about that, especially in the Black community. Like, get the help. Get the therapy. 
get what you need. Allow God to guide you to the solution. Okay, it, it, whatever that may be, but start with inviting him in. You heard yes. Felicia's story. You see where she is. So you can see that God is faithful. You invite him in, surround yourself with people, get into your purpose and get into a healthy habit lifestyle, things that will keep your mind on good. Because sometimes we just allow ourselves to just keep that negative narrative. Start with changing the narrative. Felicia, you're amazing. We are so excited for everything God is doing and we cannot wait to have you back on the We love you so, so, so much. I love you too. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We love you and we will see you again next week with another story time with Therese.